Her name is Barbarella, and she makes science fiction something else. Jane Fonda is Barbarella. Post-irony is a form of irony that is characterized by a self-conscious and knowing use of irony in a way that's used to question and subvert convention. And for all of you who bought into crypto last year, I'm going to dumb that statement down. It's basically when something is pretending to be cringe or mid, but it's actually based. A great example of this is in the movie The Matrix Resurrections, which I did an analysis on. In that video, I talked about how Resurrections uses post-irony to talk about the nature of film franchises and the role of content in an algorithmic world. I mean, I didn't say it like that. Probably should have. That sounded pretty smart the way I just said it just now, but like, I basically said that in so many words. Anyway, The Matrix Resurrections is a great example of a film that nails post-irony. Baked within the very fabric of the movie is this brainy, self-sabotaging, and self-referential undertone that kind of makes the movie feel dumb and off-putting, and it's all there on purpose. It's there by design. It's not a movie that tried and failed. It absolutely succeeded in what it was trying to do, which is to destroy its own franchise ability so that the artist could ensure that Warner Brothers couldn't go messing up their work with sequels and spin-offs she didn't want attached to her craft. It's a step beyond meta, I think. It's a form of irony that is aware of its own irony and uses it to make a statement or comment about the way that we see and consume media itself. In fact, I go so far as arguing that the pandemic has led to a new age of filmmaking in Hollywood, the post-ironic era. The last three years, what's dominated the box office and streaming wars alike have been movie sequels and remakes that make meta commentary on themselves and the nature of filmmaking itself. I mean, we've got Matrix Resurrections, which I mentioned earlier, Tom and Jerry, Space Jam 2, Home Sweet, Home Alone, Scream 5, just to name a few, all of which are built on established IP, all of which come from well-known and established franchises, and all of which make post-ironic commentary. But it doesn't end there. We see the seeds of post-irony starting to make their way into Oscar bait and uniquely original films like Banshees of Inishirin and Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we're living in the age of post-ironic cinema. And this has taken root for a few reasons, but I think the core reason is the way that our relationship with media has changed due to the pandemic. During the pandemic, with cinemas closed and productions on hold, movie studios were really looking for ways to continue to generate revenue and keep audiences engaged, releasing sequels and remakes of popular and successful films as a way to do this, as they already had built-in audiences and were less risky financially. People have also been spending more time at home, consuming more media than ever, and in the process becoming more aware of the conventions and the tropes of different genres and different types of movies. This increased awareness about what you're consuming has led to a renewed interest in film that play with and subvert these conventions, such as self-referential movies that make meta-commentary. And the films that do this best, I think, are the ones that come pre-packaged with a sense of nostalgia and levity, while also commenting on the current state of the world and the movie industry. These are IPs that have love, that have established some kind of relationship with their viewer, and so the risk of losing somebody because of the way that you change the franchise or the way that you move it forward is a lot lower. You can afford to take risks and be more thoughtful and make this kind of post-ironic commentary in nostalgic IP. And it's within this entertainment context that Sony has greenlit a Barbarella reboot with Sidney Sweeney coming in as both a producer and a leading star. And I think it's a brilliant decision. So what does this mean for Barbarella and what can we expect from the film? Well, to answer that, Let's go to the original film and look at what its deeper meaning really is. Barbarella is a science fiction film released in 1968 based on a comic of the same name that was made as a commentary on the nature of feminism, sexual emancipation, and gender roles in science fiction. Made to look and feel like an adult erotic comic, but that's I think the central head fake of this whole IP, this whole Barbarella idea. It's an inherently ironic piece of art, and those themes are represented in the film in a lot of different ways. One of the most obvious statements it makes is through the construction of the main character, Barbarella. She's a strong, independent, and sexualized woman who goes on a space adventure to find the twisted Dr. Duran Durand and shut down his post-ironic, sorry, positronic, 
Ray. This portrayal of a woman as a strong and sexual being goes against how women were usually portrayed in science fiction at the time, when they were often relegated to the role of the damsel in distress. The film also explores uh, a future of humanity where technology has advanced to the point where humans have lost their ability to feel and experience pleasure. Now the character Duran Duran wants to use that same technology that has made people numb to pleasure and essentially reverse it to an extreme degree in order to control and manipulate the women of the galaxy and assert sexual dominance over them, which Barbarella overcomes, pun intended, by having such a powerful orgasm that it destroys the death ray along with like half the city. I mean, this movie was swinging for the fences. This satirical representation of the future ultimately makes a statement that the more we grow as a society technologically, the more we need to stay in touch with our sexual nature in order to stay human. Like. Shit, we just don't make movies like this anymore. It's kind of sad, honestly. This movie is defined by its campiness, by its lunacy, its incoherency. It's all there that way on purpose as a pointed way to sort of mock the stuffy, cliche, male-dominated sci-fi industry of the 1970s. And look where we are today. I mean, good science fiction has been pretty sparse the last few years, and what we have gotten has been super serious and grounded. Don't get me wrong, I love Dune. Everything has its place in society. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of that, and I even did a video on it if you want to check that out. Here, here's, here's the link. But the genre is in need, I think, of an IV injection to expand what it can be. We're coming off of this time in history where Star Wars, the biggest science fiction IP, disappointed everybody, and fantasy has taken a step forward through the likes of House of the Dragon and Willow, so now it's it's time for us to kind of reorganize our relationship with science fiction and what it can be and what it can do. And to do that in a way that touches on the commentary that the first film of Barbarella made while also bringing in new commentary about the world we live in today and the nature of how human sexuality is manifesting itself alongside the advancements of technology. I think Sydney Sweeney is the perfect actress to star in a Barbarella reboot that accomplishes this task for several reasons. Number one, Sweeney has proven her versatility and talent as an actress, both in film and in television, which makes her well suited to take on the character of Barbarella, a role that requires a range of physicality and ironic nuance in performance. Second, Sweeney has a strong presence on screen, which is essential for the role in a film like Barbarella. She has an energy and a natural charisma that I think would make her compelling and engaging lead. Third, Sweeney has a unique look and style that is perfect for the iconic role of Barbarella. Her striking features, her striking aesthetic would make her stand out and absolutely own the role of Barbarella. She's talented, she's versatile, she's got a unique look and style that I think will bring new life and dimension to this iconic character and make for a really memorable and engaging film. And I think the world is ready for a Barbarella remake. Overall, it's kind of an exciting time to be a film lover. I mean, living through this brief period where films are intentionally derivative and ironic as a way to make sincere commentary about the kind of world we live in is something that I think we haven't been able to see much in the history of film before. We're kind of in this world of breaking new ground, and Barbarella as a comic and a film has that post-ironic sense of heightened awareness about the state of humanity in its bones. And there's so much shit going on in the world today with technology and civil liberty and social upheaval that will certainly make for fruitful material to build a sincere and poignant satire around. I can't really imagine this being a serious flick similar to Dune. I almost see this as like a really up-leveled B-movie because that's what the original Barbarella was and you have an A-list actor taking on the role of Barbarella, but there's nothing about that movie that is serious, that is grounded. So it's gonna be really interesting to see the tone and the way that they play with this and they bring this forward and how they use the film as a way to analyze the world and to comment on the nature of science fiction in today's world. I for one cannot wait to see what comes next for Barbarella. I think it's going to be a film that certainly polarizes people, but will matter a hell of a lot. If you like this video, go follow me on Likewise. I have a list of all of the other movies uh, that I'm doing analyses on right now. Check me out on Likewise. There's a link in the description uh, or it'll be a top comment. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much.